Simulan mong abutin ang iyong pangarap Na magbibigay danga sa iyong bukas Ang suliranin Hindi laging nandyan dapat mong harapin Kami iyong kasama sa bawat takin Magkaakbay nating lulutasin Dito sa Gagabay sa iyong pagkamulat Naway umukit ito sa iyong isipan Maging mapanuri Sundin ang wasto at nararapat Kagandahang nasal ang ipakita Ipadama ang pusong may malasakit Dito sa Fernandino Sasamahan ka ni Fernan At dino ang bagong barkada mo Since TV. Greetings to all of you, dear Fernandino teens. I am so delighted to be with you because today we will discuss and learn some astounding and pertinent lesson in our subject in the disciplines and ideas in the social sciences here in Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. We will learn and understand the meaning and relevance of symbolic interactionism with yours truly, Miss Keith P. Dimog, or you can just call me Mom Keith. So dear students, make yourself comfortable and join me for another episode of Teens TV as I share with you the interesting meaning and importance of symbolic interactionism. I know that you are already excited to know and understand this theory, but before we start, I would like you to close your eyes and imagine a world where there is no form of communication. There are people around you, but you cannot communicate with them. There are a lot of ideas that you want to convey to them, especially with your loved ones, but you don't know how. Imagine also that you are overwhelmed with your emotions and you want to share them to the people around you, but you don't know how you will express them. What will you feel, dear students? Will you be happy or elated? Or you will feel sad? I guess you will feel sad. And I know that you agree with me because not expressing our ideas and opinions and emotions is a terrible thing to happen. How about 
if we are able to interact with other people by sharing with them our ideas and opinion freely and express our emotions openly to other people. We can tell anything we want and express our emotions like we are able to show our gratitude or our happiness to other people by openly saying how thankful we are or how happy we are. How will you feel about that? Will you feel better? I know you will. Whatever we do, wherever we are, we cannot do away with communicating with others because this is our way of interacting with other people. Interaction and communication are parts of us humans. They are our God-given nature, so we should be so thankful about them. Interaction with other people and communication give more meaning and beauty to our life. We have been mentioning about communication since a while ago, but do we really understand the real meaning of communication? Do you still remember your lesson in your subject in oral communication, particularly about the meaning of communication? Oh, somebody sent a message about its meaning quoting the Britannica Dictionary. It is stated here that communication is the act or process of using words, sounds, or signs, or behaviors to express or exchange information or to express your ideas, thoughts, feelings, etc. to someone else. This is so right. Okay, dear students, let us take a closer look at the meaning of communication. If you notice, it does not only comprise of words, but it also includes sounds, signs, or behaviors. It means communication does not have to be verbal. It can also be nonverbal. With verbal communication, of course, we are going to use words, and these words are used to form the different languages that people use today to express their ideas, opinions, emotions, etc. With the use of words or the language that we understand, it is easy to connect and interact with other people. But how about nonverbal communication? Nonverbal communication, on the other hand, is a way of communicating and interacting with others without the use of words or without the use of language. How is that? How can we communicate, connect, or interact with other people without using words? Let me give you some examples of nonverbal communication for us to comprehend this concept better. Some examples are facial expressions, eye contact, the tone of our voice, hand gestures, and body language. Let us dissect this further. If you are talking to somebody and he or she nods his or her head, it means he or she understands what you are saying even if he or she is not saying anything. Sometimes, we do not need to talk. We just look at each other's eye and we already know what the other one is thinking about. Or if a person makes a thumbs up sign, you know that it is okay without the person saying a word. There you go, dear students. I hope this part of our lesson is clear to you. Now, dear learners, we have to remember that we are social beings. We cannot live alone. We need other people. That is why we continuously interact, communicate, and connect with them. Having said this, let me ask you these questions. How can you understand our social world and interact with the people around us with the use of communication? 
We cannot talk to everyone around us at the same time in order to know what is going on. We may not even know how to speak the languages of the people we need to communicate with. Okay, dear learners, we have mentioned earlier that communication also involves signs or symbols. Hence, with the interplay of these signs, symbols, and languages or words, we are able to understand and connect with the people around us in our community and society. And this will be explained further as we discuss our lessons in symbolic interactionism. Stay tuned with us as we dig deeper about the meaning and relevance of symbolic interactionism. Ang Schools Division Office City of San Fernando, Pampanga ay kaisa ng Department of Education sa pagsasagawa ng mga proyekto at programa na tumutugon sa mga pangangailangan ng mga mag-aaral. Inilunsad ang Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors upang magbigay ng educational at psychological assistance sa mga mag-aaral, magulang at stakeholders ng division. Kaya, kung may nais kayong itanong tungkol sa pag-aaral, maaaring magpadala ng mensahe sa Division Call Center for Tutors and Guidance Counselors Facebook page o tumawag sa mga numero na makikita sa ibaba ng inyong screen tuwing lunes hanggang biyernes sa ganap na alas 8 ng umaga hanggang alas 6 ng gabi. Maaari rin kayong sumangguni sa ating guidance counselors na nagbibigay ng guidance and counseling services. Lahat ng inyong ibabahagi ay mananatiling confidential. Ang nasabing programa ay nagsisilbiling daan upang malaman ang feedbacks ng stakeholders para matulungan ng ating division na mapagbuti pa ang mga sumusunod na programa. Ano pang hinihintay ninyo? Tumawag na sa aming mga numero o bumisita na sa aming Facebook page at magpadala ng inyong mga katanungan. Fernandino Teens TV We are back and you are still watching Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. We reviewed the meaning of communication and how it would connect us in our social world. Our connection to our social world will be explained more by symbolic interactionism. Let us start with a bird's eye view of this theory and its brief history. Symbolic interactionism is one of the major perspectives in the field of sociology because it does not only provide the key framework for researches among sociologists, but it can also explain the behavior and actions of people in our society. Having said that, let us define what symbolic interactionism is. According to Carter and Fuller, symbolic interactionism is a sociological theoretical perspective that examines how society is formed and maintained through face-to-face, -face, repeated, meaningful encounters among people. This means that symbolic interactionism presents society according to the meaning that people develop in the course of their everyday interaction with other people. Before we dissect the meaning of this concept further, let us first take a look at its brief history. From the works of Dr. Cole, the concept of symbolic interactionism goes way back to Max Weber in 1904 to 1905 in his book, Protestant Ethic and Spirit of Capitalism One central principle of Max Weber about our social world is that we act depending on our interpretation of the world around us. This principle is the heart of his book, The Protestant Ethic and Spirit of Capitalism. Weber explained the importance of this viewpoint in this book by demonstrating how, historically, a Protestant worldview and set of morals defined labor 
as a divinely directed calling from God, which gave moral meaning to job dedication. This recognized definition of work led to the behavior of devoting oneself to work and working hard, as well as saving money rather than squandering it on earthly pleasures. It means our actions and behaviors depend on the meaning that we put on things and events. For example, if education means so much to us, or we consider education as an important part of our life, then we will study hard and finish our studies no matter what challenges we encounter. However, if we think education is not important, we do not study hard or we easily give up whenever we face some challenges. Another sociologist who is largely credited in paving the foundation for the creation of symbolic interactionism is George Herbert Mead, although he did not publish about it. Most of his lectures were put in his book entitled Mind, Self, and Society, which was published in 1934 after his death. Mead believed that the development of the self is closely connected to language. The self and language are intertwined. What do we mean by this? This is how it is. According to Mead, the mind emerges from the social process of communication and it cannot be understood without it. Both phases of the communication process necessitate a social context in which two or more individuals are interacting with one another. There has to be, first, the conversation of gestures, and second, language, or the conversation of meaningful gestures. Mead explained the idea of the conversation of gestures with his famous example of the dogfight. The language of gestures was demonstrated by this example. There are dogs approaching each other in an aggressive manner. They growl and snap at one another as they walk around each other, waiting for an opportunity to attack. Each dog's action serves as a stimulant for the other dog's response. The two form a bond, and as the act is reacted to by the other dog, it undergoes transformation as well. The fact that one dog is about to attack another serves as a cue for the other dog to shift his stance or attitude. He has not done this for long before the second dog's attitude shifts, causing the first dog to shift as well. In this example, there is a conversation of gestures, but the gestures are not meaningfully significant because the reactions and responses are not done consciously. They were done instinctively or by reflex. However, language or conscious communication evolves from the communication of gestures. For example, if the students are noisy and the teachers say in a loud voice, keep quiet, some students will instinctively or automatically keep quiet but not really understand fully the situation why they have to keep quiet. So if the teacher continues the lesson and will not be focused on them, they will get noisy again. However, if the students are conscious of the meaning of what the teacher said, which is keep quiet, that is the time it becomes significant and the student will keep quiet and listen to the teacher. The conversation becomes meaningfully significant if the receiver is conscious or understands what the speaker is saying. In other words, there is reciprocity or a mutual understanding between the speaker and the receiver.
Mead has another noteworthy contribution to sociology in which he theorized the distinction between I and me. He stated that I is the self as a thinking, breathing, active subject in society, and me is a collection of the attitudes of other people that the person assumes. In other words, the I is what the person know about himself or herself, and the me is the accumulated attitudes and behaviors from the person's environment that he embodies. How is this? To understand this better, here is an example. Your friends want you to go with them to the mall instead of doing your school activities. But you know for a fact that it is not right. However, your friends might get angry if you will not go with them. So dear students, if you are in this situation, what will you do? You may put your answers in the comment section. Will you go with them or do your activities? Oh, you are fast in answering. I can already see several answers. I can see three students who said that they will not go because their school activities are more important than going out with their friends. And two students said that they do not want to lose their friends, so they will go with them and do their school activities later. Now, let us determine which one is the I and which one is the me based from your answers. The one that is acting for those who answered that they will do their school activities and will not follow what their friends want is the I. And the one who is acting for those who said that they will go to the mall because they do not want to lose their friends is the me. All right, dear students, I hope this part is clear to you. Now, let us continue with another sociologist who contributed to the theory of symbolic interactionism. We have Charles Horton Cooley, who wrote about the me by way of his looking glass self. Cooley stated that our concept about ourselves depends on the perceptions of others about us. In other words, our self-concept is dependent upon how others look at us. According to Dr. Cole, the concept of the looking glass explains why people take selfies. She stated that the I take a selfie and share it in order to make the me available to the world. Okay, dear learners, we have mentioned three sociologists who contributed to the creation of the symbolic interactionism with George Herbert Mead, who contributed largely to its foundation. But we still did not mention who gave the name symbolic interactionism. It was mid student Herbert Bloomer who gave the name symbolic interactionism. Dear learners, this is the bird's eye view and brief history of symbolic interactionism. Please stay tuned as we explain the meaning and relevance of symbolic interactionism. Maya po oras kaya kayo, Fernandinos. Ako pala ay Elwin Arlserano ng City Tourism Office ng Ciudad San Fernando. Ngayon ng bulan na ini, pag masusyan tayo ang National Heritage Month na ating temang Victory and Humanity, Upholding Filipino Heritage and Identity. Kambe na nini, metong karang aktibidades na ng Ciudad at pinang launching ng Bayong Heritage Passport. Ang Heritage Passport at pinang metong karang proyekto ng kaya katamong Ciudad yung pamin na muna ng Mayor Edwin D. Santiago. Anong nuka rin makalagay lang ang dingega ng heritage sites, heritage structures, na akit tamo kinikatamong heritage district. 
Ah, kaya doon din Kenny, ding importansya da ding mapil na tradisyon, Kenny Siyudad, kalupa yung pamangawang parol, ang po yung pamangalesa. May ahos siyang heritage passport, uling atin kang dapat gawan, anong nuka rin puntalan mula ding at yung passport, at saka ka mag-selfie, kay ba't kanta palto making tourism office, at mamielang sticker ka rin ay ganaganang apuntulan mong lugar. At di mong may ngari ang tutong passport. Balo ni Ngeni, panahon na ini, eh tamo makain bisa lumal, uli na ng COVID-19 pandemic. Kaya naman kimbanwa nga ini, agkatan ko lang ding bikers tamo, edad 18 hanggang 50, imbis na lumaot kayo po, di na nyo lang dita ka oras, di kaya katamong heritage structures, Kenny Shudan. Anya naman ka rin mumunang 50 bikers ang makayari kaya katamong heritage passport, may di na lang premium only San Fernando loot bag. Gawan nyo mo ba ang makapag-register? Munta kayo mismo opisina na ng City Tourism, yung munisipyo, at saka kayo magdalang metong valid ID. Kabila ng kaya kayong heritage passport, ating makasipit ang instruction nung nano pa yung dapat gawan. Anya naman ka rin hanggang kapadyakin, na nano ko pa, tara na! TV. You are still watching Fernandino Teens TV Season 2. I know that you are eager to listen to more of our lesson, so I will not keep you waiting. Let us move on. We have talked about the short definition and history of symbolic interactionism. Let us dig deeper about this theory. Let us start by dissecting the principles or premises of symbolic interactionism. Herbert Bloomer was the one who gave life to symbolic interactionism, basing largely but not solely on the works of George Herbert Mead. Bloomer posits that symbolic interactionism is concerned with three major premises. First, Premise is the human beings act toward things on the basis of the meanings that the things have for them. Second, the meaning of objects and things is derived from or arises out of the social interaction that one has with other people. And the third premise is that these meanings are handled in and modified through an interpretative process used by the person in dealing with the things he encounters. What do all these mean? Let us start with the first premise. Human beings act toward things on the basis of the meanings that the things have for them. Symbolic interactionism claims that the world we live in is composed of objects. Herbert Bloomer classified these objects into three categories for your convenience and for clarity. One, physical objects such as chairs, trees, or bicycle. Two, social objects such as students, priests, a president, a mother, or a friend. And three, abstract objects such as moral principles, philosophical doctrines, or ideas such as justice, exploitation, or compassion. Let us continue. The nature of an object or how a person describes an object depends on the meaning that the person has on that object. What do we mean by this? Let us give examples to explain this better. Let us have the first object, the chair. All of us know what a chair is, but is the meaning and value of the chair the same for all people? 
Dear students, for a person who works from home, will consider a chair as a furniture that he or she needs in order to do his job. However, for a sales lady who stands up and walks for six to eight hours or more a day, a chair will be a heavenly thing because it will give her great comfort. Let us have the students as another example. A statistician will consider them as numbers. How many students are enrolled for this school year? How many students will graduate? How many students are vaccinated? And so on and so forth. However, for the teachers, they consider the students very precious and as part of their life. Recently, a lot of people take care of dogs because having a dog helps them relieve their stress and makes them happy. However, for a person who was beaten by a dog, the sight of a dog scares him. From these examples, we can see that the meaning we put to these objects defines or affects our behavior. In addition, the meaning that people put to these objects is not the same for all people. That is why, before jumping to conclusions about the behaviors of other people, we should first determine the meanings that they have for the objects that we are considering for us to understand them better. The second premise is the meaning of objects and things is derived from or arises out of the social interactions that one has with other people. In this premise, people create their meaning to different objects basing from their interactions with other people. We Filipinos, for example, consider rice essential in our daily life because we have grown to know that rice is our staple food from our elders and from our ancestors. For Westerners or Europeans, they might not even care about the existence of rice. For them, bread is more important. Let us have another one, a bicycle. All of us know what a bicycle is, but for children of underprivileged families whose income is good enough for their food only, they were taught by their parents and they have come to understand that they need to be contented with the presence of food on their table every day. So having a bicycle is like acquiring a diamond. On the other hand, for children of rich people, a bicycle is just one of their toys that they can easily discard when they get bored with it. Let us consider the culture of people. You studied in your subject understanding culture, society, and politics about people's culture or people's way of life. You have learned that different people embody different cultures and their culture shapes their viewpoints, beliefs, norms, values, characters, etc. That is why we have different beliefs and values because we grew up in different cultures. For some students, being on time in class or in any appointment is important because they were taught by their parents about the value of time. But for others, they were not taught about such things, so more often than not, they take time for granted and take their own time even if they get late in class or in an appointment. Okay, dear students, in this second premise, interaction with other people is very essential. Let us move on to the third premise. The third one is that these meanings are handled in and modified through an interpretative process used by the person in dealing with the things he encounters. 
This is where, where the agency of an individual comes in. Agency, according to Bloomer, is the ability of human beings to analyze possibilities and choose the best option for his or her well-being. Interactions with other people and groups can provide multiple layers of meaning to an individual, but the individual can choose whether or not to accept the meaning offered through his or her personal evaluations. In other words, we are exposed to a lot of things, especially in social media. However, some, if not most of us, do not believe all the things that we hear, see, and read in different social media platforms. We usually contemplate on them to determine which ones are to be accepted and which ones are to be discarded. I know that you will agree with me that not all things that we see, read, and hear in the social media are true. Some are not. It indicates that the human individual is always confronted with the reality that he must interpret in order to act rather than an environment to which he responds due to his organizational structure. He must deal with the situations in which he is required to behave, determining the meaning of others' acts and sketching out his own course of action in light of that interpretation. In this third premise, an individual will not just react to objects, situations, and events, but he will act or do something based from the meaning and interpretations that he or she has on the objects, situations, and events. Students who value their education well study hard in order to finish their studies. Business owners continuously plan and innovate in order to maintain their business. Schools continuously develop teaching strategies to cope up with the minds of the 21st century learners. There you go, dear learners. These are the three major premises or principles of symbolic interactionism. In a nutshell, Symbolic interactionism posits that people in society have their own meanings and interpretations to objects or things around them and these meanings and interpretations that they have are based on their interaction with other people, including their own experiences. In order to maintain their well-being and the society as a whole, they act according to the meanings and interpretations they have of objects, events, situations, and of their experiences. Dear viewers, this is what symbolic interactionism is, and we are going to wrap up when Fernandino Tins TV returns. Hindi lamang sa larangan ng pangkabuhayan apektado ang maraming pamilyang Pilipino, kundi maging sa larangan ng pagkatuto ng bawat batang Pilipino. Inilunsad ng siyudad ng San Fernando ang programa Nurturing Environment and System for Thriving or NEST, isang education community pantry na naglalayon para sa isang malawakang pagtulong, pagtabay at paggabay na ang focus ay ang makapagbigay ng tulong at suporta sa ating mga mag-aaral sa pamamagitan ng pagbibigay ng educational needs gaya na lamang ng school supplies, tutorial sessions, study tips, at iba pang mga pamamaraan na mas lalong makatutulong sa pag-angat ng ating edukasyon. Dahil hindi hadlang ang pandemya sa magandang kinabukasang naghihintay sa ating mga mag-aaral. Sino-sino nga ba ang mga kalahok sa programang ito? Sa pagtutulungan ng ating school administrators, guro, magulang, at iba pang mga miyembro ng ating komunidad gaya ng barangay officials at sangguniang kabataan, ay siguradong magiging mas matagumpay ang programang ito. 
Ano nga ba ang magiging proseso ng naturang programa? Una, magkakaroon tayo ng isang Facebook group, ang Pampanga High School Nest Education Community Pantry na pangungunahan ng Educational Pantry Coordinator. Ang mga magulang, tagapangalaga at mga guro ay iaad ng ating Educational Pantry members sa Facebook group na ito. Sa page na ito, maaaring i-post ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga o sino mang miyembro ng Educational Pantry ang kanilang mga kahilingan o requests. Kailangan ding ilagay ang pangalan ng mag-aaral, grade, at section para sa mas agarang aksyon. Oo nga pala, hindi lang requests ang pwedeng i-post. Pwede rin mag-post ang mga nais magbigay ng tulong o mga gustong mag-donate. Sabi nga nila, sharing is caring. Pandaan na ang Facebook group na ito ay pribado at posts na may kaugnayan lamang sa page na ito ang maaaprobahan. Mayroon din palang Google Form na ipamamahagi kung saan maaari nating isumite ang ating requests o kahilingan. Paano naman ang mga walang internet access sa bahay? Huwag mangamba dahil merong mga nakalaang drop boxes ang ating paaralan na kung saan maaaring ihulog ng mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang kanilang requests. Sa mga nais namang mag-donate ng school supplies, maaaring ilagay ang mga ito sa tabi ng drop boxes. Maaari ring mag-donate ng mga kagamitan o cash donation kaakibat ang pagsusumite ng deed of donation form. Pangalawa, mahalaga ang ugnayan ng mga guro at ng mga magulang o tagapangalaga sa programang ito. Gamit ang video calls o chats ay ipahahayag ng mga guro ang adhikain ng programang ito sa mga magulang o tagapangalaga. Maaari ring gawin ang orientation na ito ng face-to-face -face, kasabay ng schedule ng kuhanan ng mga module. Gaya ng nabanggit, Hindi lamang mga bagay ang maaaring i-donate. Pwede rin mag-conduct ng tutorial session, study tips, at iba pang mga kagamitan sa pagkatuto gayat ng mga aklat o kaya ay gadgets. Ikatlo, ang requested needs ng ating mga magulang o tagapangalaga ay ililista ng ating nest focal person. Ang mga coordinator naman ang mag-aayos ng mga ito. Ang advisors ng ating mga mag-aaral, guidance counselor, at iba pang mga guro ay ipaaalam sa ating mga magulang at tagapangalaga ang petsa at oras ng pamimigay ng requested needs na gaganapin sa paaralan. Sabi nga nila, it takes a village to raise a child. Kaya naman aktibo at iba yung pakikilahok ang inaasahan sa pagsasanib puwersa ng paaralan at barangay na siyang tutukoy sa pangangailangan ng bawat Fernandinong mag-aaral at kikilos upang matugunan ito sa tulong at suporta rin ng mga miyembro ng komunidad. Isang malawakang komunidad para sa isang produktibong educational community pantry ay tiyak na lilikha ng iba yung pagkilos upang maging mas magaan at madali ang pagkatuto ng bawat kabataang Fernandino. Kaya naman tandaan, magbigay ayon sa kakayahan, kumuha ayon sa pangangailangan. Fernandino Teens TV We are back and we are about to end our lesson. Before we wrap up, may I request you dear learners to get your phones and choose a partner from your group chat and choose a name that will identify you like Team Big or Team Pretty. Then send each other a message upon my instruction. But that will be done later. I just want you to prepare while I wrap up our lesson. Okay, so let us sum up what we have learned at this hour. First, 
We talked about the definition of symbolic interactionism. Then, we mentioned its short history with the three sociologists who contributed to the development of the theory, namely Max Weber, George Herbert Mead, who contributed the most, and Charles Horton Cooley. Lastly, we discussed the three major premises of symbolic interactionism, which are the meanings that a person has on an object, the influence of the person's interaction with other people on the construed meaning, as well as the actions that the person takes to maintain his or her well-being and the society he or she is a part of. There you go. These are the things that we have learned for this hour. As I have told you a while ago, you are going to choose a partner from your group chat and give a name to your team. Now, are you excited with our activity? Somebody messaged that she is nervous. Please don't be. I know you can do this. This is easy and fun. This is what you're going to do. I am going to give you some objects and you are going to message your partner about the meaning of the object to you. The meaning should only be a word or two. Remember class that in symbolic interactionism, an object is not just a thing. It has three categories, namely physical, social, and abstract. To continue with our instruction, for example, I will say dog. What does a dog mean to you? It can mean sweet or stress reliever, comfort, etc. Send the meaning to your partner, then one of you will send the meaning that you send to each other in the comment section. State your team name and the meaning that you gave so we can identify you. The meaning depends on you. See, it is easy. Now let us start. The first one is mother. What does a mother mean to you? Again, state your team name and the meaning of the object. You are indeed children of this technological age because you are so fast with your answers. These are interesting names, Team Awesome and Team Harmony. They said, Mother is love and care. You are so lucky you are loved and cared for. And I hope you reciprocate that love and care that your mother continuously gives you. Another team answered, Team Cutie, and they said, Food and love as well. Your mother must be a good cook. Another lucky one. Are you ready for the second one? The second one is teacher. Let us see what your teachers mean to you. You can be honest. I will not take that against you if you give a negative meaning because as we have learned, each one has his own meaning to objects based from his own experiences and interaction with people. So whatever meaning you have, positive or negative, I will respect that. All right, and here is what Tim Lucky said, strict but kind. I will take this as a compliment because even if teachers are kind, sometimes they need to be strict because they want you to learn and not to take your studies for granted. Tim Poodle also answered knowledge and punctuality. You must have learned a lot from your teachers and they must have reminded you always to be punctual in class. Now, let us have the third one. The third one is siblings. What do your siblings mean to you? We have team Harmony again and they said, we need one. Oh, both of you have no siblings. 
I think you should tell that to your parents, not me. And here's Team Beauty. This team must be beautiful. They said, fight and love. It's normal for siblings to fight a lot, but it doesn't mean that you don't love each other. And I hope that as you grow older, the love that you have for each other will exceed any differences and disagreements that you will have in the future. Oh, another team answered, Team Awesome. Team Awesome said, help and care. This is nice and sweet of you. If I got it right, you care for your siblings, that is why you help them. We move on to the fourth. The fourth is tree. What does a tree mean to you? Here's Tim Awesome again. They said, fruits and shade. Yes, you are right. Trees give us fruits and serve as our natural umbrellas. They provide us with a cool shade. Tim Lucky also said, do not cut, plant more. That is true. We should not cut the trees. Instead, we should plant more. Planting more trees help in mitigating the effect of climate change. Tim Poodle also said, clean air and good health. Of course, if we breathe in clean air all the time, it will help us to be healthy. I am so amazed with your answers and I am glad you are all environmentally conscious. You are aware of the importance of our trees. Let us have the fifth. The fifth object is garden. What does a garden mean to you? Oh, we have a new team, Team Violet. Team Violet said fresh vegetables. Both of them have the same answers. Yes, fresh vegetables. And I hope you love eating vegetables. Team Lucky said, Bahai Kubo. You remember that song, Bahai Kubo with a lot of vegetables. I love my viewers. You have a wide range of imagination. I can see a new team again, Team Mabait. Team Mabait said, flowers and vegetables. One must have a flower garden at home and the other has a vegetable garden. Either one is good. Another team sent a message, Team Violet. They said, gulayan sa paaralan. Wow, I am happy that you are aware of the existence of this in our school, even if you do not come to school every day. There you go, dear students. You elicited different meanings from the different objects presented to you, which just showed that each of you is unique. As Jane Goodall said, every individual matters, every individual has a role to play, Every individual makes a difference. Thank you for watching and for giving me this opportunity to share with you the meaning of symbolic interactionism, Fernand Dinotin. Once again, I am Miss Keith P. Dimold, your teacher in disciplines and ideas in the social sciences in Pampanga High School. Sampai jumpa di